Hi everyone, in this IXL video, we are gonna be covering F23, solve equations using cube roots. And that shortcut code is TQ5. Before we get started, let's refresh our memory as to what the most common perfect squares and perfect cubes are. All right, here is a document that you should have received already from your teacher. If you have not, first off, check OMHS, see if it was uploaded there. If not, then send your teacher a quick email and they will be more than happy to provide you with it. What this sheet is, is it's a reference sheet to help you memorize your perfect squares, which are on the left, and your perfect cubes, which are on the right. It is critical that you guys work on memorizing these because it's very similar to how in elementary school you would have memorized your multiplication facts, so like your times tables. By having your perfect squares and your perfect cubes one through 10 memorized, it will provide that easy recall because this is something that will show up again in Algebra 2, I mean, sorry, Algebra 1 when you get to high school, and it will be on the FSA. When you take the eighth grade FSA, any questions involving square roots and perfect cubes are on the non-calculator portion. So that is another reason to work on memorizing these because you will not have a calculator to just say, hey, what's the square root? Or hey, what's the cube root, okay? Hopefully you have your perfect squares memorized because those are all of your doubles in your times tables. Three times three is nine, five times five is 25, etc. Which means the perfect cubes should be where you can designate your studying to, all right? But until we have those memorized, you do have this as a reference sheet so you can build up that memory. All right, I'm hopping off my soapbox. Let's get to the assignment. We wanna look at this equation, a cubed is equal to one. What is A, the cube root of 1? In an equation like this, when we read the directions right here, we just need to know the cube root of 1. If you know the cube root of 1, you know the answer. However, on this first example, I would like to show you why it works. Okay? All right. We're going to copy down our equation over here so we have room to work. We want to find the cube root we want to solve for a, all right? And I have a cubed is equal to one. Remember when you solve equations, you always perform the inverse, so the opposite operation. So if we had a plus five is equal to 10. Well, to solve for a, to get a by itself, we would do the inverse of adding five, and that would be subtract five. The same is for this example. If we want to solve and get a by itself, we need to do the inverse of a cube. And the inverse of a cube is a cube root. Well, essentially what we are doing is we are taking the cube root of both sides. Here, the cube root of a to the third, or a cubed, is simply a. A is by itself, which is what you want when you're solving an equation. And then what's the cube root of one? I'm not gonna pull up the reference sheet because I bet you know this. Yeah, the cube root of one is simply one. And why is that? Well, the reason is because one times one times one is equal to one. That would, could be rewritten as one cubed. All right, that one's not too shabby, right? Okay, let's try this one. All right, same thing. If I have j cubed is equal to 27, I know in my head, I'm not gonna write it down this time, that to solve for j, I need to take the cube root of both sides. What is the cube root of 27? Anybody know this one? All right, if you don't, that's where you can look at your little reference sheet and I just pulled off the section we need. And what you'll do is you'll say, all right, I'm taking the cube root of both sides 
and that means I need to know the cube root of 27, which is right here, and that's 3. All right, this one, let's double check our work again on this one because we double checked our work with the 1. I mean, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, I could keep going and it'd always be 1. So that's not really a good example. But let's say you want to double check your work. You can double check your work by substituting 3 in for j and seeing if the equation is still a true statement. All right, our original equation is j cubed is equal to 27. We just have decided that, or we not have decided, we just discovered that the cube root of 27 is 3, therefore j is equal to 3. I'm going to substitute 3 in for j. Let me get my colors right here. And let's solve that. Remember, 3 cubed means 3 your base times itself 3 times the exponent. So your, the red 3 is your base. The 3 that's written in black is your exponent. So it's 3 times itself 3 times. 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So it checks out. So that's how you can check your work. Ooh, cube root of a thousand. Anyone know this one? That would be 10. Cube root of a thousand would be 10. So what I just did there is what you guys should do as a way to help you memorize these is flip your paper over or if you have it pulled up on your desktop, kind of like I do, hide it. See if you can figure out the answer but then pull up the reference sheet to double check and make sure you're right, because that will help you kind of quiz yourself constantly and work on memorizing your perfect cubes. And yes, the cube root of 1,000 is in fact 10. All right, let's jump up a couple levels. Ooh, here is n cubed is equal to 216. What's the cube root of that one? Hmm, let's try that trick again. Well, I know that the cube root of five, that five cubed is 125. I got that one memorized. So therefore, 216 is bigger. So it maybe be like seven. That's gonna be my, it's gonna be my thought. Let's see. Ooh, nope, it wasn't seven. It is six, but again, I was close, all right? So that's gonna happen when you're trying to memorize them, you're not gonna always get it right, but that's the trick. Okay, so now I'm gonna say to myself, the cube root of 216 is six. 216 is six. Six cubed is 216. Oh, see, look at that. I was so focused on trying to say the cube root of two of, <laughs> see, I can't even get my words right. Blah, blah, blah. Refocus. I was so focused on trying to memorize that and say six cubed is 216 that I typed my answer in wrong. But when that happens, yes, it stinks because it kills your smart score. But please make sure that you guys are always looking at the reasons. All right, and this actually is very similar to what I showed earlier when I showed the work, kind of showed the thought process, is it's focusing in on you taking the cube root, six times six times six is 216, all right? So when it happens, don't get discouraged. Take a moment and look at the explanation so you can figure out what you did wrong. All right, let's jump up a level to do an, one more problem. All right, if you get yourself all the way up into that challenge zone, you may get questions that look like this. S cubed is equal to negative 512. Ooh, I haven't had any negatives yet. Well, let's first focus on just what the cube root of 512 is. Then I can work on getting my signs correct so I have a negative 512. 
right? The cube root of five of a positive 512 is eight. Well, that means eight times eight times eight is equal to a positive 512. And I clearly can't write today. Which that makes sense because a positive times a positive is a positive. Well, I need it to be a negative 512. So let's see what would happen if I did the, if I squared, not squared. See, I told you my brain's just, oof, that one mistake and it got me all raveled. But don't let it do that to you. <laughs> is that, try to see if negative 8 cubed is going to work. All right, we have negative 8 times negative eight times negative eight. The key is they all have to be the same sign. They either all have to be positive or they all have to be negative because when you're working with exponents, it is that base, it is that number multiplied by itself three times, which means if it starts out as a positive, it's positive the whole way through. Negative, negative the whole way through. All right, well, negative eight times negative eight, a negative times a negative is a positive. That'd be a positive 64. But it's cubed, so I gotta multiply it by negative eight again. Here, a positive times a negative is a negative, which would result in a negative 512. Okay, sweet, that's not too bad. I'm gonna make sure I type this in correctly, negative eight. All right, perfect. So hopefully this has helped you all understand this assignment and please work on memorizing those perfect squares and perfect cubes so that way it is just quick offhand knowledge. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out via email or of course, come to our weekly help sessions. Bye guys.